This is where it gets interesting. This, this is, is the plasmoid unification model. Okay. And again, this is basically this integrates all sounds, all colors, all elements. All of the sacred numbers are in this. Right. Uh, astronomical numbers. You look up here in the right, the sun, 864,000. Um, and you, people can go through this and work this. Now, I've had some posters, pr full big size posters printed up of this that, mm -hmm. uh, that I would sell to anybody who wanted one. If somebody wants to really get in and study this, it really looks cool up on the wall, but y you know, it's, there's so much information in here. Um, if anybody wants to dive into this. What's the diagram on the bottom corner? There's a the sun, the earth, and the moon. Down here. Yeah. yeah. Showing the numbers. You know, the sun is, you know, 864,000 miles. Um, and he's showing how those numbers that measure the sun, the earth, and the moon correlate to these various frequencies. Oh, wow. So in our one of our, our previous uh, discussion with Ben, we did touch upon some of this. Right. You know? So here's your, your basic diagram. Okay. Air inlet, your pre-ionization chamber, which is fed now into the plasmoid generator. Mm -hmm. Then that's fed into the thunderstorm generator, which then is fed through the carburetor into the generator. It captures the exhaust output from the manifold and feeds it right back into the thunderstorm generator. So does this replace the need for fossil fuels? You use fossil fuels only to get the, the initial temperatures to create the plasmas, and then once you've done that, it's self-perpetuating. But it requires something to get the energy up. So the, 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 the models now use fossil fuel only in the initial, but once the, the requisite temperatures have been reached and you've generated the plasmas, now it is, and I suppose, you know, at some point, I don't know, it would run down, but it can run. I mean, in the, as long as the equipment holds up, so one of the things that's now being done, like with George Lush, is they're now going to go into really high-performance metals. So I think the lifespan of this process is going to be dependent upon the lifespan of the materials out of which the thing is made, particularly right. the thunderstorm. Okay. So in the interview, which I can play, I mean, I have it here, we can play the interview with him where he's talking about now, you know, he's got the industry contact, so they're going to be... Um, going into like high high performance materials the kind of materials you would be using in the aerospace industry to build a new generation of thunderstorm generators wow so the pre-ionization chamber the function of the chamber is to pre-ionize incoming air to the engine air is drawn into the chamber by a vacuum emanating from the engine that is to be pre-treated before it enters the plasmoid generator that's the bubbler it is pre-treated by exposing the air to ultraviolet light at a specific frequency of 100 microns. This frequency is determined by the frequency of ultraviolet light emitted from collapsing bubbles within our plasmoid generator. The bubbles collapse violently as they are exposed sequentially to both vacuum and pressure pulses, resulting from the movement of pistons within the combustion chamber of the engine or the generator. Ah, uh, okay. This has the effect of making the gases, this, this pre-ionization has the effect of making the gases more reactive by ionizing a small percentage of each gas present in the air, whether nitrogen, oxygen, or argon. And then this all pumps back into the carburetor of the it, of the mode of the engine yeah i well yes and then it, and then it, it somehow keeps cycling through the it engine keeps cycling and recycling so everything that's coming out in terms of of okay so oxygen is coming out because that's basically it's air pure air coming out because all the other stuff the the the, the hydrocarbons the carbon monoxide carbon dioxide nitrous oxide that's all being recaptured and broken down in a sort of a low energy atomic reaction is what it's called. Okay. They're calling it. Okay, got it. And so here, you know, here's the diagram, the schematics of the pre-ionization pre chamber. And so, again, all of this is open source, so people can go on and, you know, I mean, yeah, you can go ahead and bluster all you want about, about hoaxes and frauds and all of that. But while you're doing that, or while these people are doing that, others are actually now building these using these i know at least one guy in australia a young fella 
a uh, very smart young fellow who is building his own machine by using the schematics, and we should soon be hearing from him what his results are. Here's, again, the cross-section, uh, the schematic of the of the bubbler, and mm -hmm. all the parts are that you would need to, to build one are right here. Here's all the part numbers um, that you need to put the thing together, and the team that's come together around this is totally open to helping you know, backyard mechanics and home experimenters who want to try to build the small scale of this technology. Um, okay, yeah. So it's been proven. It's been done. People have these. Some of these backyard engineers have done it. They've obviously well. The first one it. we saw. That yeah, was we just that watched that. Yeah, right. Uh huh. So, uh, what are the ultimate implications of this technology? It will massively increase the efficiency of right. any engine or generator and current anything combustion. that runs on. Fossil fuels will be the 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 efficiency will be massively, and this is one of the things that's now been demonstrated repeatedly. It massively increases the efficiency, and like George Lush just says, once we have cars that are retrofitted with this, um, he, he, the way he put it, he said like instead of cars, you know, driving down the city streets, exhausting pollution, they'll be like mobile trees because that's what trees do. Right. They take in the the the, uh, the carbon dioxide and they put out oxygen and then that oxygen like if you're in a nice pristine forest where you've got healthy forests with trees I mean it's 19 20 21 percent oxygen that's yeah combustion engines are only 33 percent efficient I think I think that's yeah but like maximum maybe yeah so so yeah all of this will be is available for people to study so wow I would say you know. Good. Be skeptical. Be skeptical, mm -hmm. but be open-minded and do your homework, um, and decide for yourself. And here, again, here's your. You can see this the swirling. It's just like it's very much the the Hilch vortex tube, okay. except in the Hilch vortex tube, the cold air is in a confined stream within the the hot air, right? Correct. Okay. In the thunderstorm generator, you actually have a pipe, a tube inside another tube okay and here's this is your swirl chamber right here now what is what are these depictions uh, that he, malcolm was showing on the the descriptive series he did on your website where he was basically showing this giant sort of like pine cone shaped thing it was metal and it was like a it looked like a giant metal pine cone oh i think that was the tur one of the turbines it was huge it looks huge, at least in was the video. Was it this thing here? Yes, that thing up there. Yeah. What's That's that called? The, the Vajra Implosive Turbine. 